Room on the broom. Level four questions. These are the hardest, most challenging, where the answers are not in the text usually, and you need to draw on your own general knowledge and understanding of the world to help you reason and problem solve the answers here. The witch had a cat and a very tall hat and long ginger hair, which she wore in a plait. How the cow purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on their broomstick and flew through the wind. But uh, how the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly, it blew off the hat. What do you think will happen if the witch drops her cauldron? Look at the crows. How can you tell that it's windy? Down cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat, but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws, there bounded a dog with the hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, then eagerly said, as the witch pulled her hat firmly down on her head, I am a dog as keen as can be. Is there room for on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch, and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. What would happen if the witch couldn't find her hat? How do we know that the dog here looks proud? Over the fields and the forest they flew, the dog wagged his tail and the stormy wind blew. The witch laughed aloud and held onto her hat, but blew, away blew the bow from her long ginger plait. What would happen if the dog caught the bow? What would you do with your hat on a windy day to stop it blowing away? How could she stop the bow from blowing away? Down cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the bow, but no bow could be found. Then out from a tree with an ear splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low. Then said as the witch tied her plait in a bow, I am a bird as green as can be. Is there room on a broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch, so the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. What would you do if the bird didn't find the bow? Why isn't the dog falling into the haystack? Over the reeds and rivers they flew. The bird shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow but let go of her wand. Down cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand but no wand could be found. What would you do if you were the frog? Where is the back of beyond? Here's the frog. Where is the back of beyond? What would happen if the witch doesn't find her wand? Then all of a sudden, from out of a pond, leapt a wet, dripping frog and a dripping wet wand. He dropped it politely, then said with a croak, as the witch dried her wand on the fold of her cloak, I am a frog as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, cried the witch, so the frog bounded on. The witch tapped her broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the moors and the mountains they flew and the jog, the frog jumped for joy and are frogs always clean? And why is the frog jumping for joy? Do you think it would be easy or hard to jump on a moving broom and why? The frog jumped for joy and the broom snapped in two. Down fell the, fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. If you were the witch, what would you say right now? I'm a dragon, as mean as can be, and I'm planning to have witch and chips for my tea. No, cried the witch, flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her, breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon grew nearer and, licking his lips, said, Maybe this once I'll have witch without chips. 
What would you do if you were the witch in this situation? But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of a ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark and sticky and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads and had wings like a bird. Its terrible voice when it started to speak was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched and it strode from the ditch and it said to the dragon, buzz off, that's my witch. What would happen if the dragon didn't buzz off? If you were the dragon, what would you say? The dragon drew back and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he spluttered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird and down jumped the frog. Down jumped the cat and phew, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, the grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be in that dragon's inside. Why did the dragon say that he'd made a mistake? What would you have done if you were the dragon? Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, find something everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily and the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. Iggity, ziggity, zaggity, zoom. Then out rose, do you think the animals know what's going to happen? Why do you think the frog chose a flower? A truly magnificent broom. With seats for the witch, the cat and the dog, a nest for the bird and a shower for the, for the frog. Yes, cried the witch and they all clambered on. The witch tamped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Why would the frog want a shower? Why would lights be important on a broom?